Thanks for staying with us. Now, why do we all need to have a national identification number is our question. Here are a few reasons we found. First, the card will contribute to national security. Proof of identification would help the government keep track of illegal immigrants, criminals, and individuals who might pose a risk to the country. Second, the card will prevent identity theft and fraud. Third, the card should give us some access to government amenities and finally as our ceo feature for the month um last uh, for this month highlighted you know when he came on our show it should help with lending which in turn boosts the economy as entrepreneurs can access cheaper loans to mention a few now we know that there's a high level of insecurity in our country and most of our government facilities are poorly managed and most people prefer to engage services of privately run institutions so why then should we bother with an identification card. I mean, if we do not have any even amenities to enjoy in the first place. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 So I'm going to come to Tammy, then I'll come to um, Inkechi. Tammy, what do you think? Why do we even need to have an identification um, number in this country as Nigerians? Why do you think we need an identity? I think one reason, I mean, I think you've mentioned a role that a, a couple of reasons, a number of reasons already, but one that stands out to me is so that it will just be easy to find out who is perpetrating what crime. I think it will just be easy to trace people. And also on the good side, like on negative side, it will be easy to find out who is perpetrating which crime. People wouldn't just do things and not be traced. And on the good side also, social amenities, it will be easy to access them. Maybe not, not even just from the government, it will just be easy to access other benefits. For example, you mentioned loan facilities and things like that. So data is very helpful. Having this identity just helps us to have data, helps us to plan, and it just makes things easy for everyone. Absolutely. How about to you, my um, mind. Jennifer? Yeah, um... It is important because everyone needs a form of identification to show where you are from, mm. to start with that. And then um, it's going to help with the national data. So at least the government is going to know how many people are in the country, who they are, and it is going to be easy to track people. And it's also going to help to track people that are dead, especially when you can't find probably a family member or a friend, mm -hmm. and then you go to the authorities, they can easily search for their record, and then you probably know, okay, this person is no more, mm. or we don't know where this person is, mm. or something like that. Yeah, and you know, I mean, just listening to you now, when you talk about people that are dead, I'm thinking, okay, all these people that we have, all these bloated um, um, parastata where you have ghost walkers, you mm -hmm. know, and all of those things. Just imagine if everybody, mm. yes, everybody is required to come with your identification yeah. before you, I mean, paid salaries or whatever. I think it would go a long way, yeah. you know, but I really want to hear from the experts. Yeah. So I'll bring in the chemist, F. Young. He's a legal practitioner, geopolitical analyst, research consultant, communication professional, and a public affairs commentator. He is currently head of research as, at SBM Intelligence, an African focused risk consultancy and Nigeria foremost geopolitical intelligence firm based in Lagos, where he manages a diverse research team that spans all of Nigeria's 36 states, as well as Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, and South Africa. And he's joined us via Zoom also this evening. Thank you so much, Ikemesi, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be with you. <laughs> so you listened to in you listened in on our banter and what we talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know why we need it because I mean um, the government came up to say everybody needs to go and get registered. But I see there's a lot of resistance, right? There's a there's a there's a lot of resistance from people. People don't understand why do I need to do this? I already have this. I already have that. You know why this particular national identification number, right? So we thought to have you know a conversation where we can actually paint a picture in a, in the same climb where you have a national identification number. What should that kind of number, you know, um, do for you as a citizen? What kind of access should it give you as a citizen? Maybe we should start from there. Okay, great stuff. Uh, thanks for having me once again. So um, ideally what um, a national identification number should do is that it should be your personalized portal towards operating in the modern world. It's very hard to organize modern uh, societies without uh, being able to track, you know, how people move, what transactions they are involved in, 
you know i mean i mean again it's good for it's, it's good for governance it's good for regulators it's good for policy makers to be able to have a very good you know very good sense of how the economy is operating and how the country you know operates you think about how we um, calculate you know gdp figures for example or things like inflation right it's hard for um policy makers and statisticians and people who are watching the economy to adequately plan if you don't have a sense of what people are up to and, first time, and you know the logical starting point for that is to figure out how many people exist right in the first place so so a national identification number should be a conduit through which all of your interactions how an individual you know is, is situated and what you know her position is in the uh, in the economy right should be right so so um you look at how um, social security works for example um, in the us or similar other uh, um, um, efforts at um, data organization you know in advanced countries right and what happens is you know a citizen has a a number which serves as a reference point for accessing government services yeah right and and, and then what the private sector often does is you know, if is is that they follow, you know, the dance and the beats, right, of policymakers, right? And so if if you know regulators, if the government, right, if policymakers, you know, say that this is a substantial, you know, and a comfortable and a convenient way of us identifying people, you know, the private sector adopts that and then you know it it, it then becomes that reference point to which you know, government is able to properly plan and government is able to properly organize, you know, how they are going to target services yeah. and target, you know, uh, um, interventions in terms of capital investment, in terms of how, you know, the average consumer is behaving, right? Um, and, and, you know, they're able to um, better craft policy that works. You know, your question talks about the ideal. So, so this is This is supposed ideal. to be this the ideal. What, I do. This is what NIN is supposed to achieve, right, in a nutshell. Wait, oh, but he I want to ask you a question. Do you think even the NIN officials, the NIMC officials, do you think they yeah. know that this is what it's supposed to achieve? <laughs> or they are just after getting the identification? You know, I ask this question because, right, um, I don't want anybody to come and arrest me. <laughs> but I know that there are people paying money. NIN is supposed to be free. But people are paying money to go yeah. and get the NIN. So what if I go there and I still give you a fake, uh, what's it called, um, or an incorrect um, data for you to feed into the system, right? It, I mean, is it really going to help with that, especially when we want to trace it to um, fighting um, insecurity, for instance, in the country? Yeah, and, and you know, your, your question really just summarizes the, the cardinal points, right, about all... Um, everything that turns with respect, you know, data management and uh, um, data, um, you know, you know, proper data identification. So you have a situation in Nigeria currently where the vast majority of Nigerians are not captured in the formal economy. So you know, all of us that are in on this conversation right now, myself, um, you, um, and, and your colleagues in the studio, and um, Timmy, who's um, who's, who's calling in from Ibadan, right? We are participants in the formal economy. I would wager that all of us have a driver's license. All of us probably have means. We all probably have, you know, international passports. And a lot of Nigerians who are, uh, are tuning into this program, right, you know, within the country and around the world, you know, are, are, pro are probably already captured in some way or some form yeah. in the formal economy, right? But NIMS is current is actually targeted at the hundreds of millions, and they're actually hundreds of millions. The estimate is there are about a hundred million Nigerians, right, that don't have a name, right, and a similar number that do not participate as much in the formal economy. Now, um, I don't know, I can't speak for NIMC officials as to their level of, you know, awareness and understanding about what the gravity of what they are trying to achieve is, but from a you know, policy framework uh, a standpoint, right? And I've been, you know, in on seminars and conferences, you know, where 
um, you know, I've had to engage with um, NIMSI officials. The problem of data identity, you know, the problem of data identification and data management in Nigeria is a very serious and, you know, cogent one, especially when you consider that, you know, we're dealing with a myriad of security situations in the country. Yeah. But then again, the, the cardinal question then becomes, can you trust people when you give them a form to fill, whether they pay for it or not? That's sort of secondary to the conversation, even though that raises its own governance implications. But when people get that form, right, and they are filling in those details, how do we trust that they are validly representing, you know, all, all of what they feel, right? You know, you know, all of what they feel, you know, on, on, on those forms that they yeah. receive, right? You know, represent a, a valid reproduction of, you know, their personality and their identity. It's mm. very hard to say, especially for people that haven't been formally captured. For you and I, it's pretty simple. We, you know, um, the government could probably ask one of the telcos, right, or one of the banks to pull up our bank or our phone BVN. records, and then you can do a match, which is where the NIN BVN and the NIN, you know, SIM registration synchronization becomes important. It's really because of data identity. Mm. It's really because of data integrity. Right, you know, I mean, you know, lots of Nigerians have postulated on social media, and that's been in large part because the government hasn't properly communicated this. That you know, the government is looking for a way to access people's resources and people's accounts, and you know, um, you know, they want to be able to, you know, properly, you know, track, you know, how people move, you know, and all of that. That's why the harmonization is happening. But really, for most people that have needs already. The harmonization at its basis level, it's really a matter of data integrity. So this person says, you know, my name is X, Y, Z, right? In this particular order, this is my phone number. This is where I live. Mm -hmm. If you are, you know, a subscriber to any of the four, you know, telecommunication um, providers here in Nigeria, you have filled a form that also acts as a representation of your identity. So the idea is to match, to be sure that what I you see has on say records I coheres with what they tell us have. So, so it's a way of, it, 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 it's a, in, in, in its roughest sense, you know, it's an attempt at, you know, instituting checks and balances to be sure that, you know, both databases, you know, are correct or, or are up to date because I mean, People move, people get married, people change their names and, you know, their identity. Identity is something that's always in a state of flux, really, right? So, you know, most times when one person, you know, represents themselves in two different ways to do two different people, you know, most times we're quick to, you know, raise up the suspicion of fraud. But in many cases, you know, in a sense, identity might change. I mean, if you get married, oftentimes in this country, especially yeah. as a woman, mm -hmm. your surname changes, for mm -hmm. example. Right, so so that's really what the harmonization really supposed, supposed to do to um, achieve um, to address. That's yeah. for those that are already captured. For those that are already captured, there's an existential problem around how do you trust that this person who says my name is ABC, you know, has you know a name right that actually is ABC, you know, and that's where the challenge lies. And, and you know, it's not clear that you know the policymakers right now have a very good response. Right for that, but this underscores the importance of having a, you know, you know, a proper record of, of you know, your identity, a yeah. proper means of identification. Because at some point, you know, we're in a globalized world, and there are many things right now that can happen without you properly identifying yourself. You can't get on a plane, mm. you can't get a scholarship. Oftentimes, you can't get into certain institutions. Right, you know, of high So there are so many benefits. Almost yeah. educational institution right now okay. without having, you know, you know, you know, a form of identification. So, so yeah. it's really important, right, that as we're trying to grow and build the economy and create opportunity for Nigerians, right, to provide for themselves, to feed their families, to build businesses and to create jobs for everyone. The question of identification will become even more relevant. Absolutely. So, so that's why okay. we're trying to address that now. <laughs> we're not doing it in the cleanest or in the most efficient well, it's manner. Well, better right? done than not. But, okay, so let me let yeah, uh, yeah. Tim, because <laughs> Tammy and uh, Jennifer, I'm sure they're itching to ask, because <laughs> let me come with uh, Jennifer first. I'll come to you, Tammy. Hi, can I see it? Um, okay, so we, um, it was mentioned earlier that the government wants the telcos to get involved in the NIN registration. And I think um, if for all we know, yeah, 
we have those little shops around the states where if you get a new sim you can just quickly register your sim and all of that now when you go to nimsi office they use some certain um, equipment when it comes to the registration, your capturing, and then printing of your, your temporary thumb and all that. Yeah, your thumbprint and temporary um, slip. slips. Now, um, how effective is it going to be with the telcos now? Do people actually have to go to their um, major um, outlets? For them to get this done because in as much as people are going to nimc we're talking about um overcrowding and now that um there is covid we're trying to reduce that now if people have to go to those outlets i don't I, i'm not sure we have a lot of um big outlets for these telco companies how effective is it going to be once the telco guys come on board and then they start with the name registration Okay, right. So um, it, it's a great question you've asked, right? And uh, 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 right now, you know, the frame, a framework that would guide, right, um, how uh, telcos are able to onboard, right, Nigerians into, you know, you know, into the NIMC database uh, uh, is, is still, still being crafted. So that's a conversation that's still happening, right? But we can talk hypotheticals, right? And, you know, with the telcos, right, um, they are probably best place that i mean if, if you're looking for a logical standpoint right for you know trying to capture the most number of nigerians right in in the most efficient manner right it, it would be through the telcos and that's simply because they have the reach right and they not only have the reach they, they've had you know you a decades long experience right in trying to, to properly capture and identify Nigerians. A lot of the telcos have well-built out agent networks. You know, they have a very, very coherent agent structure where all you might need to do is go to the neighborhood, you know, lady who you, you purchased recharge cards or you can do a welcome back. Uh, um, you know, you can, you can do a welcome back. Uh, you can work a welcome back process from if, say, your SIM card gets, you know, your SIM card, you know, gets compromised in, in, in any manner right and they are able to onboard you on uh, in a matter of minutes right so 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 what the what it, it, in an ideal sense what the telco's participation you know in this exercise would consist of would be to broaden you know out the number of touch points that nigerians can go to get themselves registered yeah. right so instead of all of us going to the NIMC office yeah or the local government, you know, council headquarters, right? You could have a situation where if there are 100 or 200, you know, um, Richard Card sellers, right? Or, uh, um, Those or, or, or same identity yeah. uh, um, operators in Surulere, for example, alone, those people can serve as touch points. So you've got 200 more people that can ensure that they are onboarding more nigerians mm. into the system and you know oftentimes with these people they have the training they have the equipment you know and and the telcos are able to rigorously police them because the ncc has and let's not forget this the ncc has very very you know um, rigorous parameters right through which it guides the telcos on you know you know what kind of data to capture right everyday nigerians and how to go about it in order to ensure that the system right um does not lend itself to to, to compromise right okay. so so the telcos would be you know a, a very good avenue point think of for example the conversation right that we're having through 2018 and 2019 about deepening financial inclusion and how to get the telcos you know into it right despite the adversion of you know the nigerian financial institutions to have a telco led you know financial inclusion strategy the CBN and the NCC and policymakers recognize that nobody has the spread and the data, like the you know, and you know, and the databases that the telcos had really can't Absolutely. compete with them. Nigeria's be, largest sorry, bank we'll, we'll need to has got you. something like nine million customers. NTN has sixty-five million subscribers. So if you sorry, Kamesi, we will need to cut you off just for a minute. We just want to go on a very quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll continue the conversation.